But we're going to start today with one of my favorite topics, the eight guys you don't want to date. And then secondly, how to feel heard in a relationship. So we can all admit that there's a dating game being played out there. And that's one thing that I wanted to jump on in this five-week series that's coming up here on the podcast to discuss with you, open up the lines of communication, and this is definitely one way to beat the dating game out there is to become more conscious and self-aware of your experience while dating, while you're out there exploring what's happening in your world. But you're not doing that alone, so you're back and forth, push and pull experience with somebody else. All right, so let's get into the eight guys you don't want to date. The boring guy. Just bland texts, uh, the dates are no fun, no effort. Um, The broke guy. Never offers to pay, never actually asks you out because he knows that he wouldn't be able to pay when you do get out on that date. Um, The guy that suggests Netflix and chill all the time. That's a different guy, but they could kind of relate to each other. Uh, The mixed signals guy, you know, one day hot, one day cold. You never actually know where the two of you stand. Uh, The too busy guy, whether it be work or family or going through a divorce or a breakup, recent breakup, that Peter Pan syndrome that we have here in Denver that people talk about all the time. He's just hanging out with his bros. A player. You don't want to date a player, right? Along those lines, you also don't want to date that late night booty call guy who's only available after he's been out for a night with the boys, been out for a night with someone else, God forbid, and then at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, you get the booty call. Up next, we don't want to date the quote unquote nice guy, the manipulative, the guy who's trying to say all the right things in order to get what he wants. It's not necessarily intentional, it's just uh, how they were raised and for the first couple of months everything seems fine and then all of a sudden you start to get this nervous intuition kind of a gut feeling that he's not who he says he is but he was placating you probably says yes to everything it's awesome in the very beginning but it leads to frustration and resentment on both parties and i cannot wait to release friday's episode with jeff lawton titled Nice Guys Finish Last, where we talk more about this guy that you don't want to date. So stay tuned. A guy that's getting a lot of popularity is the narcissist. It's all about him. 100% all about him. And narcissist is kind of a broad term that we're applying to a lot of different types of people who are out there dating. Um, It could be the too busy guy. could be a player. uh, could be the late night booty call guy. It could be Um, getting mixed signals. These are all characteristics of a narcissist. So those are the eight guys that you don't want to date. Now, who is the guy that you do want to date? This guy is a good guy with an edge. He keeps it exciting. He keeps you wanting to come back for more. And there's just something so natural about this person that you're spending time with that almost makes the attraction just undeniable, but in a healthy way. You know, all the other eight guys might be attractive in the very beginning, but not sustainable. So what we're looking for is that good guy who treats you right, does what he says he's going to do when he says he's going to do it, but he's got a little bit of an edge. And over the next five weeks, we're going to talk about what that means in a lot of different ways. So we're going to reframe what you've thought about the eight guys I just mentioned, as well as the one guy that you should be looking for when it comes to your dating experience in modern dating. While I have you here, guys, let's talk about um, what to do about guys who are just oblivious. The guy that just doesn't get it. You're sending all the signals, giving him the go signs, um, definitely putting it all out there, and it's just like bouncing back at you on a brick wall. And I recently wrote a blog post, it's about how to make your partner feel heard in a relationship, which is definitely something that our community talks about a lot. Dave, I just don't feel heard. It's as if I'm saying all the right things, but the guy that I've been seeing for a month or two, he just doesn't get it. And that's what we want. That's part of the quality of a good guy with an edge is he gets it. He understands. 
So throughout this journey of hosting the podcast over the last almost two years now, June will be two years when we first aired our episodes with Jackie and Jessica, um, which takes me back down memory lane. Um, I still chat with both girls as frequently as I possibly can because they're a big part of how much growth I've seen when dating here in Denver. But along the way, we were receiving feedback, and that can come from different places like rejection. Rejection is just information. Uh, You take it as what you will, and every single time that I'm rejected, I take it as a lesson learned, and I move forward with it. So if I come across um, someone that I like, someone that I'm interested in, but the connection isn't going deeper, the connection isn't happening naturally, and the feedback that I receive is just, I don't feel heard. Okay, well, instead of like me projecting all my shit onto somebody else and saying, oh, that's completely all about her, you know, she wasn't present, she wasn't saying what she meant, I take this as feedback and I run with it. And I say to myself, okay, what's missing on my side? Because this is my journey through Uh, modern dating. This is my journey through my life and how do I want to create it? How do I want to design it? And I choose to live by those five pillars of health that we talked about on an episode a week ago. It was my pleasure to uh, put that one out there for you guys because um, it deeply resonates with me on how I make my decisions from values-based questions that I ask myself, which lead me to understand what my needs are in a relationship and then it helps me manage my expectations. So we're still on our foundational level talking about setting intentions, set healthy boundaries, and then learn how to manage expectations. But we're going deeper with these concepts now that we're almost two years into the podcast. And it's my job as your leader, as the person who's giving direction, my experiences given to you guys because I don't want you making the same mistakes. So for the men who are listening to this podcast episode, uh, for the women who are listening to this podcast episode, I hope that you guys come together a little bit stronger after we talk about this communication breakdown that we have, maybe in the first couple months of a relationship, or this can happen at any time, uh, where one partner is just saying, they don't get it, they don't understand me, I don't feel hurt. I haven't felt her in a relationship before too. And I was like, why is that? What was that all about? So I dug deep, I dove into the research, and here's what I came up with. So communication is a learned skill. It's not something that's innate in any one of us. We learn it from our family systems. We learn it, learn it from our peer groups, that we have external influences that teach us how to be. What do I mean by that? Well. Making the assumption that what I just said landed with my partner and was heard. And this is where we can kind of come into the um, experience of he just doesn't get it, she doesn't make me feel heard, etc. And this is why a partnership is so invaluable in our lives to reflect upon us uh, what's happening to show us our reality. Maybe it's the reality that we've created for ourselves out of those learned systems from our childhood, early adulthood, and then past relationships. All right, so what do we do about it? Well, if communication is a learned skill, I'm here to give you guys kind of paint a scenario of a couple of people that are in our community. They reached out and they said, this is what's happening in our relationship. Can you help? Well, we'll call these people Mark and Jane. Part of communication is being a good listener. But this is the foundational principle of being a good listener. When your partner wants to communicate with you about something that's important to them, they will let you know in many different ways. It might be subtle. It might be very blunt. And that's, that's why we love the Enneagram is because our personality types tell our partner how we're going to ask for things. I'm an eight. I'm very blunt. A two, on the other hand, is very subtle. So we're going to have to listen for some cues. But... That's more about making our partner feel heard. On the basic foundational level, our body language when our partner is talking to us. Do we nod our head? Is our jaw relaxed? And am I turned towards my partner to help them know that I'm being a good listener right now? Um, Eye contact. 
uh, make eye contact so that you're not looking at distractions around the room, um, but looking your partner in the eyes. It's very important to build a connection with your partner through eye contact. Be present. Eliminate the distractions like telephone, uh, like your television, radio, books, or other people. When you want to feel heard in a relationship, make sure it's in a private setting so that your partner can um, look you in the eye, maintain eye contact, and also you both eliminate distractions. Now, being a good listener means affirming your partner's statements. Simple words like, mm-hmm, yes, I hear you. They all go a long way to show that you're being a active and a good listener. And then finally, wait for your turn to speak. This is probably most important uh, before we get into how to make your partner feel heard. Letting your partner finish before you begin to plan your response is a big way to stay present and engage with your partner to ensure that they feel heard. That planning your response is such a key thing to remember and stay present to is that on the basic foundational level, preparing your response before your partner even finishes talking will never make your partner feel heard. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, Mark and Jane have been dating for about a month. Uh, both partners in this scenario, they want to be in an exclusive relationship with each other. They just don't know how to bring it up. Um, so far, everything's been great. Uh, Mark and Jane have been active listeners um, each and every time that they've gone out. Divide their time in a healthy manner around how many times they go out-out and how many times they either cook dinner at each other's places or spend time night in uh, watching Netflix, which is a great date night, not knocking it. Um, but too many of those nights in, night Netflix and chill, will not help your partner feel heard. Okay, so they've been seeing each other about once a week, and they're both busy adults, so they have other priorities besides each other, which is a great way to start building a foundation in a relationship, is maintain your own hobbies, maintain your own interests, maintain your own friend groups, as well as um, keeping your priorities uh, for yourself very much in alignment. If your career is very important to you, stick with that. They've been seeing each other about once a week for a month, and Jane is interested in discovering if Mark is the right fit for her. Her gut instinct is saying yes. Um, her heart is saying go all in. And her brain is just kind of like wrestling between the two of them. Um, her intentions with dating have always been finding a long-term relationship. Um, but she doesn't want to define the relationship because she believes in her role that Mark should take the lead. Uh, Mark has been hesitating to bring up the exclusivity conversation with Jane because they're both focused on their careers and they both work long hours. He ultimately wants to make Jane a priority in his life, but doesn't want to apply pressure to the new relationship that has already shown such great promise, right? When we ask our community and our listeners what holds them back in relationships, the number one answer is fear. So in this situation, both Mark and Jane have fear and hesitation around defining a relationship, but are excited about where it could lead, so they have kept seeing each other regularly. Uh, they've enjoyed the time together. Um, they're both seeming like they're on the same page, but they just haven't had the conversation yet. Okay, so now that the scene is set for you guys, um, let's get to one of their specific dates in that month. So it's Saturday night, and Mark picks her up for dinner at his favorite restaurant, and afterwards they... Uh, return home for wine and conversation on Jane's couch. Jane starts by saying, hey, you had a busy week. How was your Friday night? Mark doesn't immediately sense that Jane is digging for something. He kind of immediately misunderstands her true intent. And he reacts with saying something like, oh, you're absolutely right. I just needed to crash after another long week. How was your night? Seems casual, right? Seems like it's natural. But Jane's a little bit defeated in this response, so she looks at him and says, um, Oh, you know, it was low-key, and I stayed in, spent time with myself, but I was hoping I would hear from you. And Mark's gut, he immediately feels like Jane's response has deeper meaning. But he can't quite put it together in his mind. So what, is, what does he do? So he quickly remembers that he hadn't texted Jane 
since setting up their Saturday night plans a few days before. And he also feels like this is not the issue at hand because they've only been dating for a month. We don't have to speak to each other every single day. He has a lot of choices to make in this situation, but he felt like he had one of two ways to go. Well, Mark can continue to live unconsciously of his partner's needs and go about sharing how busy his work week was um, because his fear of diving deeper holds him back. How do you think this choice would make Jane feel so early in their promising relationship? Probably uh, disheartened, don't you think? So Mark may actually catch an earful in the future, get a stronger sense of her frustration, or miss out on a, another date entirely because Jane was already asking herself if Mark was the right fit. That's choice number one. But on the other hand, in our community, we talk about curiosity builds the bridge to connection. Brick by brick, you can bridge the gap between distance and connection through curious questions that can truly take the conversation to a deeper level. And if Mark is choosing to stay present in this moment and tuning into his intuition, he would realize that there's another layer behind what Jane is bringing up. So how do you think Mark could make Jane feel heard to the best of his ability in this moment? We revert back to active listening to start with, but there's a lot of ways that Mark can make Jane feel heard. But the quickest way to bridge this gap possibly is widening between them in this situation, is to get curious. Get curious about what Jane is feeling by asking that question. And again, curiosity builds the bridge to connection. Mark would best make Jane feel heard if he quietly takes three to five deep breaths and asks a follow-up question to take the conversation to a deeper level, which is what Jane wants. Uh, that question could sound like this. Uh, Jane, let me see if I'm hearing you correctly. What you're saying is that you felt ignored last night? Jane has the opportunity to say that, no, I didn't feel ignored, but it would have been nice to hear from you. And she was able to clearly state her needs after he asked a follow-up question, enabling her to feel seen, heard, and safe in the present moment. And that feels pretty authentic, feels pretty natural and healthy little story that I'm telling you about a couple of our listeners, it gives us an authentic opportunity between Mark and Jane to ask even more curious and deeper questions to build that bridge. You know, this is something that Mark could say to Jane. What are more things important to you that you would like to see in our relationship? So we're bridging the gap between <laughs> avoiding or being afraid of having the DTR conversation to then Jane stating um, a couple of her needs, like, Hey, it would have been really nice to hear from you on a Friday, you know, make me feel like a priority. And if that's a need of hers, a great opportunity for her to voice that. And it also gave Mark an opportunity to dive deeper and build a deeper connection with Jay. So let's repeat that question. What are more things that are important to you that you would like to see in our relationship? And in doing so, Mark has opened up the conversation, one, to define it which is what they're both seeking. And that provides the safe and healthy space for your partner to step into it and participate in this authentic, healthy, real conversation. So if we break it down, Mark had two choices. He went with the better choice, which is to help Jane feel heard, seen, and as if she's being understood. Huge kudos to Mark in this particular situation. That was the choice that he made. But if you're coming up on a moment in your relationship and you don't feel heard or you getting the sense that your partner isn't feeling heard, we want to give you a few tools to take into that conversation in the future. So here's a few ways to make your partner feel heard. When you hear something from your partner that your instincts are saying, there's something deeper there. Take time to pause and take a few breaths, uh, which allow you as the active listener to digest what it is your partner may be saying behind their words. If you're staying present in the moment, trust your instinct and your intuition. And if you do so, these opportunities will actually be pretty easy to spot. The statements or the questions from your partner, they will give you pause.
take that pause. Don't have a response prepared already. Tip number two, avoid getting defensive. The way to avoid getting defensive is to get curious about your partner's feelings. And that way you'll be able to ask better questions than if you had just jumped to conclusions and assumed your partner is accusing you of not understanding or being able to read their mind. When you get curious, this helps open up the dialogue and builds the bridge to connection. Because Mark chose to get curious instead of defensive, he's building a deeper connection with Jane. All right, so tip number three in um, helping your partner feel heard when a situation like this comes up is reframe your question. Instead of, instead of asking a defensive question like, why would you say that about Friday night in this particular case, which could put Jane immediately on the defensive, ask a reframing question that starts with, what I'm hearing you say is, and then repeat back to them what you think you heard. And this is known in the emotional focus therapy or EFT methodology. I hope this goes a long way to help um, understand eight guys you don't want to date, um, the guy that you do want to date, and then also how to feel seen and heard in your relationship. More importantly, how to make your partner feel heard and seen in your relationship. Uh, stay tuned for next week's uh, additional uh, second part to this five-part series where I'm super pumped to dive deeper into foundational principles that we believe will help you find lasting love. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't miss Friday's episode with Jeff Lawton. Um, nice Guys Finish Last, where we dive deeper into the nice guy syndrome, um, how it's shown up in my life, how it's shown up in Jeff's life, and what we need to do about it as men. So please head on over to your favorite podcasts app, leave us a review, uh, a five-star rating, and share this episode with one person that you think would really benefit from it. Until next week, guys. 